My mission every week is to bring you closer to the best version of yourself. You have enough people in your life telling you that you can't, that you can't succeed, that you can't win. I'm here to tell you that you can. I might not tell you what you want to hear, but I will tell you what you need to hear. I'm excited to share this journey of self-improvement with you. Let's get it, my friends. In today's episode, we will be talking about how to live life with purpose. About four years ago, I was stuck in a bad place. I didn't have purpose. I was lazy. I let my physical health slip. I let my mental well-being slip. I was stuck in an unhealthy relationship. I let my emotions rule my life. I let negative self-talk run unchecked. And the thing is, I didn't know I had a problem. I kept myself busy. I socialized with people. I went to parties. I was scared to have that time alone. I was extremely uncomfortable being by myself. I was scared that if I was quiet and I was real, I would realize I didn't stand for anything. There was nothing that I could be proud of. I was comfortable being comfortable. I was happy being ignorant to myself. The danger of living life this way, drifting through life, letting things happen to you, you can become very derailed from what and who you want to become. If you are in a rocket and your destination is the moon and you're just off by one degree, you will not end where you want to be. That's why it's so important to align ourselves with what our true purpose and our true goals are. I don't want to see you when you're 40 miserable because you dedicated your life, your time and your money investing in things that don't make you truly happy. In my personal experience, I've seen firsthand the detrimental effects of people chasing the wrong things in life, leading to destroyed families. I don't want these patterns to repeat in my life, and I certainly don't want to see you go through these struggles. Let's get one thing straight. Money isn't bad. Money gives us opportunities. When you have no food or no stable accommodation, money is crucial. It's Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Once you meet these needs, then you can start talking about improving yourself. See, happiness doesn't increase relative to the increase of money. The study by Angus Deaton and psychologist Daniel Kahneman showed that once people have reached a certain threshold of money, it was $75,000, happiness doesn't increase relative to the increase in income. More money doesn't make you happier. There are people who earn $200,000. $1 million who are miserable. Before you set your goal of money being the marker for success and happiness, we have to rethink our strategy. Really ask ourselves what brings us happiness. I want you to think about what makes you truly happy. I want you to align your goals with your actions now. You need to give yourself this bit of time. Do the inner hard work now so you don't go down the wrong path for the next few years. These are the hard questions. If you want to make money, ask yourself, why do I want the money? Is it because it allows me to spend more time with my friends and family, to go on adventures, explore the world? Think, what does money allow you to do? The thing is, sometimes we don't need to earn more money. Sometimes we can cut our expenses down, take money away from things that we don't necessarily care about, and then funnel it into the things that you prioritize. Do you need that $4 coffee every morning? Do you need a new laptop, a new phone, a new car every year? Maybe not. You can channel that, take that money away from there and put it into the things that matter most to you. Happiness isn't an end goal. It can be achieved now. If you identify one of your main goals in life is your family, then prioritize them. Put them into your calendar. Schedule them in. Be present with them. Don't be spending time on your phone. Protect the time you have with your family. If friends are your priority, make sure you make the effort to connect with them. If your health is a priority, invest in yourself. Go to the gym, learn things about your body. Gandhi once said, happiness is when what you think, what you say, and what you do are in harmony. I wanna really hit home why this is so powerful. There was a study done by a nurse who worked with people at the end of their lives. They were on their deathbeds. Common themes came up about life regrets and things they wish they have done. The top five regrets of the dying. The study was done by an Australian nurse by the name of Bronnie Ware. One of the top regrets identified by these people. I wish I had let myself 
be happier. The happiness is a choice. You don't wait till you're retired to be happy. Happiness is now. I choose to be happy every single morning I wake up. Like Einstein said, the most important decision every person makes is whether they live in a friendly or a hostile universe. Another top regret of the people at the end of their lives was, I wish I had lived the life true to myself and not what other people expected of me. Who cares what society expects of us? I don't care if people expect me to have bought a house by 30, be married by 30. I don't live by anyone's expectations. I used to care so much what people think of me that I wouldn't do the things that I wanted to do. I stopped myself because I was scared what people think. But you know what the truth is? No one gives a shit. Just put yourself out there. Do the thing that you dream to do. No one is going to help you with your dream if you don't even help yourself. If you can't give 10 minutes of your time, of your day, to working on your dream, no one is gonna give a shit. My friends, in 80 years time, everyone you see around you will most likely be dead. Who cares what Karen thinks? Just do the thing you want to do. Another big regret identified by these people, I wish I had stayed in touch with my friends. As life gets busier, we compromise our friendships because of our busy lifestyle. Our friends are the family we get to choose. Everything in life worthwhile that is valuable needs time, needs effort, needs work. Friendship is one of those things. When you get to the end of your life, you want to be surrounded by your family and your friends things that matter to you. You don't want to be surrounded by money, cars, and random objects. My friends, I don't want you to be on your deathbed with these regrets. I want you to live the best life you can. Be the best version of yourself. I tell my friends, if I start focusing on the wrong things in life, if I lose touch with what is most valuable, I tell them to slap me in the face and snap me out of it. Maybe this is the message for you. Maybe you need to snap out of something. Maybe you just need a bit of time to sit and think about what is really important to you. We are all on the same journey in life. I don't sit here and pretend I know more than you. But the thing is, I believe I can learn something from everyone. I actually know very little in life, but I want to share with you what little I know. Give yourself a bit of time. Do the hard inner work now. Identify your true goals. Live your dream life. Live a life of purpose. Thank you so much for listening to the end. If this video has brought you any value, share it with your friend. I'll catch you later, my friends.